Hello all, welcome to Naresh IT. So, today we are going to discuss about custom directives. Okay. So, uh, we already learned what exactly the concept of a directive, how Angular is providing the bi-directional uh, data binding. Okay. The primary uh, concept of the data binding is nothing but directives only, okay, bi-directional. Otherwise, you have an option of expressions also to provide the binding, but expressions uh, is something like a unidirectional. If you want, if you are updating the data somewhere in controller, the data can be updated in the view. Okay, uh, that can be. I mean, it is a kind of view purpose. If you want to do something like that, you can go with expressions. But if in the view also, if you are updating some data and the data, if you want to get inside the controller, then mandatorily we need to go with directives only. Uh, so, assume that you have so many built in directives like ng model, ng bind, ng view, ng show, ng height. But if you want to create your own directive, we will have that particular requirement so many times in our application development. So, if you have something like a custom directive implementations, how we can able to create it? Well, you can use angular dot module, that module name, then you can use uh, directive. Okay. Directive is a prototype method through which you can able to provide your directive implementation. Okay. So, uh, assume the module name is my app and uh, uh, we do not require any dependencies, uh, a dependency module to create your custom directive directly you can provide an empty array and the directive you can provide your name directive reference. Okay. Then your directive implementation a function. Okay. Here first we need to understand how the particular reference need to be provided. Well, for the controller or the filter you do not need to follow any kind of rules, but for directive name we need to follow. Okay. So, assume that we have a reference, I mean a directive called ng model. Okay. This ng model directive, how the reference is provided in Angular framework. You can use, uh, sorry, I am just providing module dot directive. Wherever you have the iPhone, the first ng will be reminds in where you have the iPhone, that iPhone will be dropped and the first character of next word after iPhone. Uh, will be turned into capital and the reference will be like this a camel case we can call okay then the function okay obviously if you are injecting something as in the last session we discussed about the best practices out of that one of the concept we discussed about dependency injection so we need to use that particular dependency injection for directives also whatever the directive service anything uh, if if you require if you want to inject something it's better to practice that particular implementations using dependency injection. Okay. Now, let me take ng bind, same passion module dot directive, then ng will be common, then you have the iPhone, it will be dropped and next word first letter will be turned into capital. So, b will be capital, then bind. This is the reference of ng bind directive. Okay. So, whatever the reference you are you wants to put here. Okay. Um, so, when we are using the directive in the view, the camel case should be turned into iPhone uh, prefixing symbol something like that. Uh, but if you are planning uh, in a reversal order, if something you have iPhones in your uh, views, then you can uh, convert that particular references into camel cases. Either way you can use that one. Okay. Then this way we can able to use the directives, <coughs> I mean we can able to create the directives, but what exactly the directive will return. Okay. Directives will return a JSON object. Okay. Uh, so, returns JSON object. So, what exactly this JSON object and how it looks like. Okay. So, the JSON object, uh, the directives have few uh, predefined properties, something like restrict. Okay. To this restrict, we need to provide the information uh, how that particular directive can be utilized. As we discussed, we can use the directive as class, attribute, element, a comment. Okay. So, assume that if you want to use a directive as class, you need to use C. If you want to use a directive as element, you need to use E. If you want to use a directive as attribute, you need to use 
A. If you want to use the directive as comment, you need to use M. Okay. Uh, let me uh, let me order it. E C. Okay. Ekma. Okay. So it can be easy way you can memorize. Okay. Ekma. So E stands for elements. E stands for class. M stands for comment. A stands for attribute. Most of the times, uh, either uh, we will use E C A, but don't use. It's not a good option to create a directive as comment. Okay. So this is the first property. Uh, where we can uh, give the information how that particular directive can be utilized in our application. Okay. We can put all together any one you can provide or a combination also you can provide that is your wish. Okay. Then the second one template, template URL. You already know this in SPA we already learned in single page applications we already learned what exactly we will provide using template and what we can provide using template URL. Well, template will contain only uh, HTML code, template URL will point to the external HTML template view information. Then you have transclude. Okay. So, uh, it, the transclude can be a kind of um, true or false or element. Okay. So, if, if, if you make the transclude true, uh, the directive will be uh, make I mean the directive will be available as an object for manipulation. Okay, if the transcode is false, then the object will not be created for the directive for manipulation. Okay, you'll get a question: What exactly where we can use the transcode? Well, the transcode can be utilized inside the controller property of your directive. Okay. So, so far we seen that the controllers we can able to implement outside, but now the controller can be provided inside directive itself like this. Okay. Um, then we have, so assume that on a specific directive we might require to use other directives. Okay. Like I am using my own directive called my iPhone directive on that I just want to use another directive called ng and bind. So, if it is mandatory then we need to provide require and how many directives you want to use all that information you can able to provide okay require then um, we have a function called um, link okay where the link function is will get executed before compilation of your directive okay uh, we in the process of this particular angular framework initial sessions we seen that every directive will get compiled and then only it can able to execute or it can be understandable by angular framework through the compilation process angular will understand what were the bindings we did in our view okay so the link what it will do is this particular function will get executed before compilation of our directive at the same time we have another directive called compile okay sorry it's my mistake the link function will get executed post compilation of your directive okay it's not pre compilation post compilation of your directive the link function will get executed okay and compile function it's it's again a json object it contains two properties like pre is there and post is there okay pre is pointing to a function and post is also pointing to a function like this the pre property of your compile function I mean uh, of your compile will get executed before compilation of your directive post function of your compile will get executed post compilation of your directive. So, the link and compile post both are equal okay almost equal I can say because both will get executed post compilation of your directive okay like this uh, these are the few properties mostly we will use uh, in our applications and we have the scope also okay like the scope we can able to make whether uh, the value you want to assign or it is a function type what type of the binding uh, like you can able to provide that particular informations okay like these are the properties we can able to use on a directive okay inside a json object and the json object we need to return uh, uh, I mean inside that particular function. If you want to inject any objects that also you can do you can able to inject that, but it is better practice or best practice to use dependency injection while you are injecting any kind of dependencies. Okay. Let us create a simple program and see how the directives can be created. Okay. So, let us body create the script. So, let us 
okay module slash angular slash angular dot tree okay just gave a module name my app and uh, as I already told we do not require any dependencies to create a directive then create your directive using prototype called directive dot directive and give the directive name as my dir okay anything you can I am just providing my dir as I already told uh, we uh, this directive should return a json object so what we can do is just create that particular json object empty then to the json object dot the properties which we discussed here all the properties so what is the first property is restrict is a mandatory we need to define this one so how the directive we can use okay just make it as e then the second property is template and remaining all are optional okay only the first one is mandatory how to use the directive and remaining all are optional if you want to use if you want to provide some information then you can use it otherwise you can leave it okay uh, now return simply that json object that's it there we go okay now bind the module to our application i mean to our view use ngif and app is equals to uh, my app then body we do not require because we do not have any controller then you can see here we provided the restrict value as e so that we need to use the directive as element only so the element name the directive name it should be element so my iphen directive okay and that element need to be closed there we go so execute application if everything is fine you can able to see this is my custom directive in the view okay now uh, let us change this particular element to attribute the directive will not be loaded because I am saying that the directive should be utilized as attribute but in my view I just use it the directive as element okay. So I will provide E R A I mean I can use that particular directive as attribute otherwise element now reload the application and you can see that. So you can able to provide the combinations or any one of the type but how you are asking to use that specific directive uh, to angular framework in the similar way we need to use that particular directive in the view okay let me make the directive as attribute here my iphone directive as attribute so let me make it as div my directive and close the diff okay on any element you can able to use the directive now there is no problem okay in this way we can able to use the directives in our application okay now uh, the most uh, I mean the remaining things you just practice okay uh, I will demonstrate the link function it is very important when it comes to directives most of the times we are going to use that one okay. So json obj dot link okay where the link function will inject it with scope element and attribute okay now dynamically if you want to put something into your directive okay uh, post compilation you can use the link I mean if you want to manipulate that particular directive it is better to use link function okay. So here my requirement is I just want to put element dot append okay append is a jQuery method because angular internally contains uh, a, a lightweight version of jQuery also we already discussed about that uh, long back. So, append is inherited from the particular jQuery only jQLite we will call it a jQLite. So, what I want to do is here I just want to inject a button okay ng iphone click is equals to do submit okay. Now, this particular uh, I mean button is going to be shown in the view let us load the application and see. Okay, you can see there a button click me okay uh, nothing is going to be happened because we do not have any controllers here okay. So what I am doing is here let me uh, make a controller implementation I am not using the directive controller here out of that I am using the controller dot controller but it is it's, it's your wish if you want to uh, use your uh, controller I mean property of your uh, directive implementation you are open to use that there is no problem dollar scope dot and the function name I just given as do submit was a function type okay and uh, 
here we need to on uh, if everything is fine I just want to show an alert this is do submit function of my CTR. Okay, there we go. Now bind this particular controller to the view at the body. Anywhere you can bind, I'm using at the body. Ngifn controller is equals to my CTR. Done. Okay. So now the function is binded. Okay. So uh, through controller, so the function is available. So when I'm clicking on this particular button the function should get execute ok. Reload uh, something is went wrong what happened here unexpected token at 16th line ok semicolon remove that there we go reload ok. Now click on that one I think is going to be happen ok. So, we will get a question here whether the uh, controller uh, is available or not that might be the question. So, what I am doing is I am just uh, putting this particular button okay before this h2 okay so we have two buttons i mean we have uh, two implementations here uh, one is uh, template inside the template i have a button then i have the uh, static some html this is my custom directive uh, header to uh, tag then post compilation using link we are appending another one okay so let me change the names here template click me link click me ok reload. So, we have two buttons here template click me and link click me let us click on the template click me there we go we can able to see the alert ok and uh, now let us click on the link click me we are not getting the alert clear. So, the implementation for the both buttons are same only ok the code and everything but still we are we have some exceptions over there. Okay. It is because of the link function is executing post compilation. So, what we need to do is we need to compile our element. Okay. So, let me do one thing what I will do is first let us create the element first okay. where my element is equals to use angular dot element method and provide that. Okay. Now, this particular my element you can able to compile using dollar compile dollar compile dot uh, pass this particular my element okay. and wrap it around whatever the bindings you are identifying wrap it around scope object. Then once the element is got compiled then you can able to append the compiled element to our directive. Okay. Now, reload the application if any errors no errors now template click me is working and click on link click me that is also working understand no. So, here uh, why I demonstrated this one is I want to uh, tell you that the link function is going to be executed post compilation of your directive. So, if you are appending anything any uh, bindings uh, uh, in the link method of your uh, directive that particular uh, dynamically appended bindings should compile first ok. If you are not compiling then we cannot able to uh, execute those bindings ok. So, in this way we can able to create our custom directive ok. The directive I mean this concept is very important when it comes to AngularJS because most of the times we should have the requirement of custom directives ok. I hope that you understood this particular concept. Thank you.